Next.js is a web framework based on React.js that can be used to build full-stack websites and web applications. It's an open source project backed by Vercel and has a huge community contributing constantly on it. Makes it a good project that can be trusted and used at the enterprise products. It's on top of React.js. It means it uses almost everything from React.js library as well as as a framework it has a lot of features, includes server components, routing, optimizations, data fetching, styling, caching, TypeScript, and more. And without having these features, it's tough to use only React and deal with those challenges such as routing. If you are developing a project with React.js itself, for routing, you have to install another dependency to handle different routes. But here it's built in. In Next.js, you don't need to do anything. You just use this pattern that Next.js recommends and you will have routing on it. Alright, if you want to compare Next.js with React.js, I can say that in a typical React.js application, you have an static host that can only serve some static files for you. For instance, in the index.html, you just embed some required JavaScript files with a div that is going to be used as the root of your application. And those JavaScript files contain React library and your source code, of course, and they're going to be run on the client. But in Next.js ecosystem, clients request for a website. But this time, there is a Next.js server. There is a server out there. It gets a re user's request. It tries to handle them. And as, as the output of the request, it tries to generate an output, an HTML output, using its built-in rendering mechanism that uses React, of course, under the hood, and sends back the result in HTML to the client instead of sending everything to the client and delegating all the rendering to the clients. This way, we can have features like server-side rendering or SSR, and now that we have moved the rendering phase to the server, we can do a lot of optimizations and caching on the server. And next time, if another user requests the same web page, we can serve that cached version to the clients. There are also other competitors to Next.js, such as Remix or Gatsby, but Next.js has the most popularity in the community. For this course, I'm going to use the docs from the official Next.js website. You can find them over here in the nextjs.org and then docs. And there's a list, a full list of all the features that you can have in the Next.js. But if you're not interested in reading the documents, this video is made for you. I tried to cover almost all these topics in a video manner, so it might be easier to understand for you. And the way that this documentation is organized, you can see that they start by introducing what's Next.js and then they explain how to install the project. But I have to add that I might not follow every single step explained here because I'm going to add my experiences after working years with Next.js into these videos. For instance, for your use case, you might go with MPX create next app, but for an enterprise project that might have a microservices or micro frontend, I might use another repository. Don't worry, I'll explain later how you can find them, but in general, you can get the idea of this course. So stay with me and we are going to start by installing the project at the beginning.